The beauty and effectiveness of Stoicism lies in the fact that it isn't just a to-do list of best practices or a dictionary of life hacks. It is more than that, way more than that. It is a cohesive and coherent system of principles and practices. It is more than just practical wisdom. It is a way of life. It is the art of living. Even if you're slightly familiar with Stoic philosophy, chances are you've heard of the life-changing Stoic principles, like the dichotomy of control, memento mori, and the view from above. These principles, when put into practice, fundamentally change the way we look at things with the mindfulness they provide. The Stoics were indeed masters of perspectives, and the most powerful mindset shifts mentioned certainly are transformative, but their ability to see things differently didn't limit their commentary to just the essence of being. They had tons of ideas, tons of Stoic rules for a better life. They have left us with a considerable amount of elaboration on the most important and practically essential aspects of life and human thought. Take, for example, Seneca, whose views on time, wealth and death are the focus of today's video. As expressed in his letters to Lucilius, his views, his stoic wisdom rather, can radically improve the way you live, for the better. Seneca's advice is as relevant today as it was over 2,000 years ago. He teaches us that time is our most valuable resource, more precious than any material possession. Yet, so often, we let it slip away, lost to distractions, trivial pursuits, or simply through a lack of awareness. We'll delve into Seneca's profound insights on how to protect your time, how to live with intention, and ultimately, how to lead a better, more fulfilled life. We'll explore how Seneca encourages us to recognize the subtle ways time is stolen from us, often without us even realizing it. We'll uncover the traps of mindless habits and societal pressures that drain our time and energy. Most importantly, we'll learn how to apply Seneca's teachings to live in the present, make the most of each moment, and align our actions with our true purpose. If you're ready to take control of your life, to stop wasting time on what doesn't matter, and to start living according to the wisdom of one of the greatest Stoic philosophers, then this video is for you. Let's dive into Seneca's powerful yet underrated Stoic advice for a better life and discover how you can use his timeless teachings to transform your own. But first, we'll start with death. For as Seneca says, death is happening right now. And we firmly believe that death is the perspective that puts everything else in perspective. If you appreciate what we're doing, do us a simple, free favor by hitting the subscribe button and make sure you don't skip any part of the video to get the mindfulness needed to make your life better. Now, let's get started. Why you should not fear death. The man who places true value on his time, who carefully considers the worth of each day, is the one who understands the profound truth that he is dying a little each day. He understands the awareness that comes with facing death daily, and rather than being a source of despair, he knows how it truly brings life into sharp focus. Memento Mori, to live with the constant recognition that time is finite, that every moment is precious, is to live fully and authentically. It is a stark but empowering realization that allows one to seize each day with purpose and intention, making the most of the life that remains. You often fall into the mistake of thinking that death is a distant event, something that will happen to you in the future, far off in the twilight of your life. You imagine that you are marching steadily toward a final moment, and until then, you live as if time were an endless resource. But this is a dangerous illusion. The reality is that death is not something that will suddenly confront you at the end of your days. It is something that you experience gradually 
incrementally with every passing moment. The major portion of death has already passed. Every year, every month, every day that has slipped by is already claimed by death. Those moments are gone forever and they are now part of the vast, irreversible past. Whatever years or days lie behind you are no longer yours. They belong to death and you cannot retrieve them, no matter how much you might wish to do so. This realization is not meant to paralyze you with fear or regret, but to galvanize you into action. On the contrary, it is one of the stoic exercises for inner peace. Seneca talks about it in his letters to Lucilius. Marcus Aurelius writes extensively about it in his meditations, as does Epictetus in his discourses. Understanding that each day brings you closer to your final breath should inspire you to make each moment count. It should motivate you to live with greater urgency, to prioritize what truly matters and to cut away the distractions and trivialities that so often consume your time. The man who truly lives is the one who is fully aware that time is slipping away with each tick of the clock. He does not squander his days on meaningless pursuits or idle chatter. Instead, he invests his time wisely, recognizing that it is the most valuable currency he has. He understands that time is not just a resource to be managed, but the very essence of life itself. Each day is a new opportunity, a new chance to grow, to learn, to love, and to leave a mark on the world. To live with this awareness is to be fully present in each moment, to appreciate the small joys and the simple pleasures that life offers. It means understanding that every conversation, every interaction, every experience is part of a limited and fleeting collection of memories that you will carry with you until the end. Living with the knowledge that you are dying daily also teaches you to let go of the past. You cannot change what has already been claimed by death. You cannot undo the mistakes or relive the happy moments. But you can learn from them and you can use that knowledge to make better choices today. By focusing on the present, you can ensure that the time you have left is lived with meaning and purpose. So the man who places value on his time and lives with the awareness that he is dying daily is not morbid or fearful. He is wise. He understands that life is not measured by its length, but by the depth and richness of each moment. By acknowledging the inevitability of death and the constant passage of time, he is able to live more fully, more intentionally and more vibrantly. In this way, he embraces life in its entirety savoring each day as a gift and leaving nothing to chance or regret. Remember, death is now as is life. Reclaim your time. Set yourself free, says Seneca, not for anyone else's sake, but for your own. This is a liberation that requires you to gather and save your time the most precious resource you possess, which, until now, has often been taken from you, sometimes forcefully, sometimes stealthily, or has simply slipped away from you without your notice. It is essential that you come to truly believe and internalize the truth of these words, that certain moments in your life are torn away from you, that some are gently removed, and that others quietly glide beyond your reach almost imperceptibly. The most disgraceful kind of loss, however, is the loss due to carelessness. This is the time that slips through your fingers not because of external pressures or unavoidable circumstances, but because you were not paying attention, because you were distracted, unintentional or simply negligent. This time is lost forever, and it is the most painful kind of loss because it is entirely preventable. If you take a moment to closely examine the problem, you will come to a sobering realization. A significant portion of your life is lost 
while you are engaged in harmful activities, actions that lead you away from your true purpose or well-being, whether it is indulging in vices, procrastinating, or feeding into negative emotions, these actions consume more of your life than you might care to admit, and yet they often go unchecked, quietly draining the hours, days and years that you could have used for something more meaningful. Another large share of your life is wasted while you are doing nothing at all. This is not the peaceful stillness of meditation or rest, which are valuable and necessary, but the empty, purposeless idleness that neither enriches your mind nor restores your body. This kind of inactivity is like drifting in a fog where time passes but nothing is achieved and nothing of value is gained. It is the kind of time spent waiting for something to happen, for someone else to act, or for the perfect moment to begin, a moment that may never arrive. And then there is the time that slips away while you are engaged in activities that, though seemingly productive, are not truly aligned with your purpose. These are the moments spent on tasks that keep you busy but do not bring you closer to your goals. They might be the result of societal pressures, the demands of others, or simply the inertia of habit. You find yourself caught up in the cycle of doing, but not in a way that serves your higher aspirations or brings you genuine fulfillment. In essence, the majority of your life is either wasted on things that harm you, on doing nothing of consequence, or on tasks that do not truly matter. This realization should serve as a wake-up call, a call to take control of your time with renewed urgency and purpose. So, what can you do to reclaim your time? Start by being more intentional with every moment. Recognize when your time is being stolen from you, whether by others or by your own lack of discipline, and take steps to protect it. Set clear priorities that align with your values and goals and focus your energy on activities that truly matter. Learn to say no to distractions, to tasks that do not serve your purpose and to people who drain your energy without contributing to your growth. Cultivate the discipline to stop wasting time on things that do not bring you closer to the life you want to live. And most importantly, be vigilant against the subtle ways in which time can slip away unnoticed. Whether it is through mindless scrolling, idle chatter, or simply allowing your thoughts to drift aimlessly, these moments add up and they represent opportunities lost. By reclaiming your time, you are not just saving minutes or hours, you are reclaiming your life. Every moment you protect, every task you choose wisely, brings you closer to living with intention and purpose. It is a path to true freedom, where you are no longer at the mercy of external forces or your own negligence, but are instead the master of your own time and destiny. Living in the present moment. Hold every hour in your grasp as if it were the most precious treasure you possess because in truth, it is. Seize today's task with determination and focus, and you will find that you do not need to rely so heavily on the uncertain promise of tomorrow. While we are busy making plans, postponing our actions, or waiting for the right moment, life is quietly slipping away, moving faster than we often realize. Time, once gone, can never be reclaimed. And this is the harsh reality that many of us overlook until it is too late. The only thing that truly belongs to us, the only possession that we can claim as our own, is time. Nature, in its wisdom, has entrusted us with this singular, invaluable resource. Yet it is so fleeting and slippery that at any moment, someone or something can rob us of it. Unlike material possessions, time cannot be stored traded or bought back once it has passed. It is the most delicate of all our possessions, constantly at risk of being lost to distractions, procrastination 
or the demands of others. What fools we mortals be! We place great value on the cheapest and most easily replaced things, objects, trinkets and material goods that can be bought, sold or replaced without much difficulty. We are meticulous in accounting for these things, ensuring that we get what we have paid for and that we are compensated for any losses. Yet, when it comes to time, the most precious commodity of all, we are careless and often oblivious to its value. We spend time as if it were endless, never stopping to consider that every moment we waste is a moment we will never get back. We receive time each day as a gift, yet we do not regard ourselves as in debt for this incredible loan we have been given. We are quick to recognize when someone owes us money or goods, but we fail to see the debt we owe to the time that has been granted to us. And unlike other loans, time is one that no amount of gratitude or effort can repay. Once an hour has passed, it is gone forever, leaving us only with the memories of how we chose to use it, or, more often, how we let it slip through our fingers. The irony is that we are often more careful with things that are far less valuable than time. We guard our money, our possessions, and even our reputations, yet we let time, our most irreplaceable asset, be stolen from us by distractions, idle pursuits, and procrastination. We treat time as if it were infinite, when in reality, it is the most finite resource we have. So, what can we do to avoid this folly? First, we must recognize the true value of time and treat it with the respect it deserves. Every hour, every minute, is an opportunity to do something meaningful, something that brings us closer to our goals or enriches our lives. We must be intentional with our time, planning our days carefully, but also being flexible enough to seize opportunities as they arise. We should stop postponing what is important, thinking that we will have time later. The tasks we delay today may never be completed if we continue to push them into the future. Instead, we should approach each day with a sense of urgency, recognizing that time is a gift that can be taken from us at any moment. By focusing on today's tasks, we reduce our dependence on tomorrow, knowing that we have made the most of the time we have been given. In the end, time is the one thing we can never replace, and the only true possession we have in this life. By holding every hour in our grasp and making the most of each day, we honor the incredible gift that time is. We avoid the trap of letting life pass us by and ensure that, when our time finally runs out, we can look back with satisfaction, knowing that we did not let it slip away unnoticed or unappreciated. Less is more. We should not judge a man as poor if the little he possesses is sufficient to meet his needs. True wealth is not determined by the size of one's fortune, but by the ability to be content with what one has. If a man can find contentment in the little that remains to him, then he is richer than those who endlessly chase after more, never satisfied with what they have. However, while it is noble to be content with little, you should diligently preserve what is truly yours, your time, your energy, your resources, and your values. And do not wait until it is too late to start this practice. You cannot begin too early in life to safeguard these treasures. The wisdom passed down from our ancestors teaches us that it is futile to be thrifty only when you are down to the dregs, the very last remnants of what you have. By the time you reach the bottom of the cask, there is little left to save, and what remains is of poor quality, unfit for consumption. This metaphor of the cask is a powerful reminder of the dangers of procrastination and neglect. If you squander your resources, whether they are material possessions, time, or inner reserves of strength and virtue, until only a small, degraded portion is left, you will find that what remains 
is of little use to you. The dregs are what is left after the best has been consumed, after the richness and fullness have been spent. They are the remnants that have lost their flavor, their vigor, and their value. Imagine your life as a cask filled with the finest wine. If you drink carelessly, pouring generously without thought for the future, you will find yourself left with nothing but the dregs when you most need sustenance. The time to start conserving, to start living wisely and with intention, is not when the cask is nearly empty, but when it is still full. By then, you will have wasted the opportunity to savor and enjoy the best parts of life. Just as it is too late to start saving when only the dregs are left, it is too late to start living with intention when you have already depleted your energy, your health, or your opportunities. Begin now to cherish what you have, to use it wisely, and to ensure that your resources are spent on things that truly matter. Do not wait until you are scraping the bottom of the barrel to realize that what you once had in abundance has been carelessly wasted. So, this means being mindful of how you spend your time and energy each day. It means making decisions that reflect your values and long-term goals, rather than giving in to short-term desires or external pressures. It means recognizing that every moment, every resource has value, and that the choices you make now will determine the quality of your life in the future. If you like what we do, feel free to do more and like and share the video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, to the community. How, you ask? By hitting that like button as a symbol of your commitment to change. By subscribing to join a community where wisdom isn't just shared but lived to help us create powerful stuff. And don't forget to hit the notification bell, the gentle chime of a stoic philosopher, reminding you to return to this space of learning and growth. Each like, each subscription, each notification is a step towards a collective awakening. And if you feel that stirring in your heart, that resonance with the words of Marcus Aurelius, Seneca or Epictetus, share this video. That will help us immensely in continuing to create powerful and unique stuff for the community.